point, but growing up in the church, there's there's young adults, amen, that, uh, and y'all young people understand, you said, if I was saved, young people, amen, that's who I would act like, amen, because you really wasn't wanting to be saved, but there were people in the church that you would look at their lifestyle, amen, their dedication to God, and you said, if I wasn't doing all this foolishness, and ignoring the voice of God, that's who I would want to be like. Uh, Sister Peggy, amen, she was one of those uh, people, amen, didn't do a lot of talking, um, uh, didn't, wasn't very extravagant. But one thing I knew about Sister Peggy is that she loved God. There never was a doubt in my mind. I never had to question it. Uh, I knew that she loved God. And uh, as God has taken her through some tremendous journeys, uh, amen, uh, missionary, her and her husband, amen, many of you know Separate Beverly, amen, he attended here for a while, uh, was the uh, pastor of uh, Third Street uh, Church of God at one time, um, just an awesome man of God. His son, amen, who has also been here, Stephen, uh, they, they linked up, amen, became one. And uh, the gift that God has given them uh, in the area of missionary work. Uh, I was just doing a little studying uh, for the young people, amen. Somebody told me uh, that we come to church a lot of times and we don't, we hear words and different things that people do and we don't understand, uh, especially young people, what, what it's all about. But just to help you out, young people, amen, missionary, is to basically leave your, the comforts of your, your home, the comforts of your environment, and to go and help other people. Uh, usually, that means to go to a foreign country. Um, when you go there, you are to provide religious training and spiritual guidance. Somebody said, that sounds very great and wonderful. Why are there not so many missionaries? Because there is a risk that is involved. A lot of times, there is a financial risk you can't take everything over here with you. A lot of times there is a physical risk. Paul talks about it in 2 Corinthians 11. He said, I was robbed because Paul was a missionary. He said, I was ran out of town. He said, sometimes I was misunderstood. He said, sometimes I was even deserted. And if you read the life of Paul and his missionary work, we find out that even some of the missionaries, they end up losing their lives for what they believe in. But their responsibility is to go and to train others. And those other men and women, when the missionaries leave, they are to stand up with the training. And they are to pass on the training. The training is, is, is founded and rooted in the word of God. And it's biblically based. Amen. So on today... Um, I'm not going to uh, say a whole lot because I know Sister Peggy is going to uh, really give a formal introduction. She has a video uh, that we're going to play. I think seeing is believing. Amen. We do support this ministry. Uh, we have some of these pamphlets in the back, uh, the Church of God Global Missions, um, and that's, that's their covering. Amen. And they've been so many different places right now. They're in Sri Lanka. Amen. And it's a wonderful place. You try to say that about 10 times. Amen. You get tongue twied. Uh, but I'm going to let you look at the video. Amen. Tongue tied. Y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah, that too. Uh, y'all over here laughing at the pastor. I'm about to rebuke all y'all. Now I'm playing. <laughs> you got nothing but love for you. Um, I got Sri Lanka right. Amen. That was the hard word. <laughs> Had to pray over that, amen. Uh, but there's some pamphlets in the back, uh, amen. Feel free to pick some up. You can get a very in-depth um, explanation of the ministry and what the Church of God is doing, uh, what their ministry is doing. But I'm gonna call Sister Peggy up. Or you want you want to you want us to put the video on first? If y'all could turn down the lights for me, please. And um, we're gonna turn the video. And as soon as the video is over, uh, we're gonna turn it over. Uh, to Sister Peggy and pre present to others and some to introduce to others. Uh, Sister Pe Peggy Beverly, amen. I don't know. Sri Lanka. 
the Pearl of the Indian Ocean. An island nation with a 3,000 year written history on the other side of the world. The scriptures inform us of King Solomon engaging in trade with a distant country called Tarshish. According to lore, the Sri Lankan city of Gaul is identified as this Tarshish. Formerly called Ceylon and Serendib, Sri Lanka is located just south of India in the Indian Ocean. The small island has a population of 22 million people. Around 78% of the people are Buddhist, 18% are Hindu, only 1% of the population is Christian. You may have heard about Sri Lanka in the news due to recent mudslides, or the 2004 tsunami, or the tragic 25-year civil war between the two major ethnic groups on the island, the Sinhalese and the Tamil, that ended just a few years ago. The Church of God in Sri Lanka is comprised of 33 pastors, most of whom meet in prayer cells in their homes. Christians in Sri Lanka often face intense community and systemic persecution. Pastors are beaten. Children are forced to attend either Buddhist or Hindu schools. Last year, at Christmas, one of our churches was burned down. Then the community planted landmines left over from the Civil War in the field where the children play behind that church. This is the country God has called us to. With beaches and lush mountains and sparkling waterfalls. But the ugliness of sin is very present. We work with dedicated pastors and Christians who literally risk their lives to bring the good news of salvation to people. We could not be in Sri Lanka without your support, and we cannot serve without your prayers. Stuti, thank you. Super Aru Arudak Weva. Happy New Year. <laughs> I bring greetings from Sri Lanka. And the voice on that video was my wonderful husband. He is in uh, Mokpo, South Korea at this time, doing a youth camp. Uh, but I'm very thankful for this opportunity to be here with you. Thank you, Pastor Charles and uh, Joy, for this opportunity to stand before you and share uh, a little bit of what God is doing in our lives and what he's called us to. Uh, it was also a joy and a privilege to be able to surprise my parents uh, for Christmas as well as today is my dad's 90th birthday, and we celebrated with him on yesterday. Uh, we would like to say thank you for partnering with us as we are there serving in Sri Lanka. <clears throat> I just want to share kind of a little narrative uh, for you um, about holding the rope. You are holding the rope on this end for us. I don't know if you've heard that, but <clears throat> it's a story of two hikers. It's, it's really, the narrative is like a story of two hikers who were enjoying their journey in the wilderness. And as they were looking over the cliff, they heard someone call for help. And when they looked down over the cliff, they saw someone had fallen over the cliff and was on a ledge and had been wounded and he wasn't able to get up. So the two hikers knew that there were 
that the only help that they could, ha they were the only help that this man had. And they, they had a rope. But there was nothing to tie the rope to. They agreed that one of them had to go down over the ledge while the other one held the rope. And that's what they did. The person going over the edge r risked his life and safety to reach and assist the one who was, uh, had fallen. When they returned from the hike after rescuing the injured man, everyone praised the bravery of the hiker who went over the cliff. But the hiker who went over the, the edge spoke up and said, and this is what Stephen and I are saying, I did what I knew was right to do, but I could not have done it with my, fr uh, I could not have done it with my friend who, without my friend who held the rope. It took both of us. Without him, the men would have died. Without him, I could have died. And that is exactly what you are doing as we are working in Sri Lanka. Thank you for holding the rope. And to show our gratitude, I just have a small gift that I want to Pastor and Sister Joy to come up for a moment, please. This is the Sri Lankan flag, and I want to present this to the church. So when you see this, hopefully you'll hang it out there or something, and when you see it, that you'll remember us and you'll continue to pray for us. Oops. This fabric right here is called a sarong. Pastor Charles, will you step in this for me? <laughs> <laughs> this is the traditional Sri Lankan sarong that the men in Sri Lanka wear every day. He got a little video to show him how to kind of put it, put it on. And <laughs> oh, he's got it down there, huh? Oh, well, we can just. Let us hold up here. I know when Stephen, he, he looked at me, he says, don't even think that I'm going to put be wearing this because they wear them out. I just like, okay. And then he, uh, just, yeah, just twist it down. Yeah, he's kind of got it. There's so many different ways, but that was the easy way. <laughs> so this is the traditional Sri Lankan sarong that the men wear. I said, the next time I come, I will have something for the women, because they wear saris there. But I've got to figure out how that works. <laughs> Sister Joy, this is for you. This is a small little bag. Yeah. Yes. And just something to... Okay. His video is in there. <laughs> Amen. Sorry about my laptop. I wasn't able to print off my message here, but let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day that you've allowed us to see. Thank you for your love and your mercy that you have poured out upon each and every one of our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for uh, just this opportunity to stand uh, and minister before your people. We thank you for your word, your word that is alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And God, you know everyone that is here that is sitting under the sound of my voice, name by name and person by person. Lord, I ask God that you would speak to their hearts. I can share the words, but it's you who draws. It's you who, who uh, ministers. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would just have your way in this place, continue to move and and, and direct uh, as you have been. We just thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity and have your way in Jesus' name. Amen.
again, I bring greetings from uh, Sri Lanka. I wish I could have had a, a picture of the pastors to stay up, um, but Chrysantha da Silva, he is a national leader that we work with there in Sri Lanka, uh, a native there, um, and he's over. he oversees the ministry work there in Church of God Sri Lanka. Uh, Simon Benedict, who is our project coordinator who we work with, and he goes around the island and to assist the pastors in doing different projects to help them to become uh, self-sustaining in their ministry and in their uh, in their families. Uh, and the four of us, Stephen and uh, myself, Chrysantha and uh, Simon, make up the leadership team that we've developed since we've been there. And these national pastors and the pastors are so thankful uh, for us being there, which is so surprising. When we, when we tell them that, oh, we're living here, they think, oh, are you on vacation? Are you on holiday? We say, no, we're living here, and they're so surprised. And there are some we can explain why, and then there's many that we don't. Uh, but when they find out, they are uh, just overjoyed and thankful and just really in awe that we would come, we would leave all to come and uh, to uh, minister with them. And uh, when we meet, we meet on a weekly basis because there's such a, a grand thing, a, a lot of work to do, that we meet uh, every week trying to strategize and hear what God is saying for us to do uh, as we're there and how we can bring the pastors together because they're all separate on the island. They're all spread out all, all over the island. And one thing that we do, and they expressed, Chrysantha and Simon expressed every week, is uh, how thankful they are for Stephen and I, for one, but most of all for you, our supporters, who pray for us and who, who support us financially. But the thought that you are praying for them, that you, that they are on your mind, it just uh, causes them to, to cry each week as we pray and we lift uh, you up to, to the throne. I just want to kind of recap a little bit about that small video that was played about Sri Lanka. Uh, 20 22 million people off the southern tip of uh, 22 million people off the southern tip of India is where Sri Lanka is. And 22 million people. I'm sorry. Okay, I got to slow down. <laughs> Getting nervous. <laughs> uh, Sri Lanka is the size of uh, West Virginia here in the USA. It's mainly uh, Buddhist. 78 percent Buddhist. And their religion is, um, their language is Sinhalese. And that's what we're trying to learn right now is the Singhala. <coughs> and then there's 18% Hindu, and their main religion is Tamil. Uh, we thought that Stephen could learn one and I can learn the other, but we decided we'll just work on one because the other one was way harder than this one, and we're struggling <laughs> with this language. But anyway, and then there's 1% Christian. And uh, we live in a Catholic community, but the Catholics, even though they consider themselves Christians, they do not e like evangelical Christians. And so there's persecution even from the Catholics that uh, we sometimes go through. Stephen and I, we've just finished our first year uh, being in Sri Lanka. Uh, we celebrated that year on October of 2016, and we look forward to great and and with great anticipation of what God is going to do in this next year. This first year, he did some amazing things that we had no idea what we would do. But God just stepped in. Um, our journey has been a journey of absolute surrender. Uh, and when we knew that God had called us to missions, um, we get my props out here. We asked God for a job, for, a, for something that was much bigger than us. Because if it was bigger than us, we had to totally depend upon him. We, for everything, and that's exactly where we are. We're in a whole different country, a whole different culture, a whole different language, a whole different type of eating, just everything. But he has taken us through on an amazing journey there in Sri, in Sri Lanka. 
you know, because we often hear where God has called, he has qualified you, he's provided everything that you need, and he has shown himself strong that whole, our first year, it, and we just stand in awe, and there's nothing we can say, but thank you, Lord. God, we give you glory, you know, because we surrender all to you, and when, and when we surrender all to him, he takes care of it all. And I think when we said, okay, God, we just surrender all to you, I think God said, finally, finally, now I can begin to work in you what I've created you to do. You know, we're blessed to serve with 33 dedicated Church of God pastors and their members who daily risk their lives or put their lives on the line for the ministry there um, in the community. Most of them live in the rural communities, uh, which is out, and they're all separated, and so the persecution is heavy there. If they live in the city, it's not so much, but the Buddhists and the Hindu priests, uh, they do not appreciate them coming in and sharing the gospel. But our pastors stand strong. Their members stand strong, all for the sake of Christ. They said, the persecution that they endure, they said, isn't that what it's about? Christ gave up so much for us. And so when we commit our hearts to him, we know that he's going to take care of us. But if we have to go through this, that's what we have to do. But they rejoice, and they give God glory in everything. It just amazes me. It seems like the most more they go through, the harder they work, the harder they glorify God, the more they go out. When they get uh, beat up and... Uh, one ch the church where he shared about at uh, the pastor where the church was burned they were coming after the pastor and his mother-in-law who was a member of his church jumped in between them and when she held up her hand to protect her face they cut her hand and uh but they they they're just dedicated to all they believe god's word they believe god um our first year there has been meant, uh, spent mainly reconstructing the Church of God in Sri Lanka for the self-sustainable ministry and growth. For 26 years, that's how long Church of God Sri Lanka has been there. For 26 years, um, the, pastoral, the pastors have received support from the U.S., which is good, uh, but it has left the Church of God dependent on foreign resources and has not developed a healthy, growing church. They're just used to a handout. And instead of with the handout, which is okay, but there was no training, there was no teaching, and so that's all they want. And so we, we understood that when we went that that, that support has run out. And so now we're there to help them to build a self-sustaining, strong ministry so that they can uh, – so if all the funds were taken out from the U.S., which – could happen at any time because of the government. I mean, you know, it's a Buddhist uh, government. And so, but this would help them to be self-sustaining on their own. And so that's what we're there to teach and to train them and to help them in their projects, which are uh, goat farms, chicken farms, um, produce, just simple things, things that we consider simple, but it's big to them, to help them to be self-sustaining. Self and this year, 2017, we will, we will be implementing a lot of these projects, helping them. We'll be traveling around the island to work with the pastors to see what they need and to uh, give into those uh, ministries or to those projects to help them to uh, learn how to uh, be, we don't want them to be businessmen, but uh, to be able to sell their products, but then yet use it as an evangelistic outreach. We want it to be um, ministry as well as help them in their uh, ministries uh, and their, in their families. Um, you know, God has called each of us to greatness. In Luke 14, 12, it reads, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. You are called to greater things.
he doesn't want us to settle for what we can do in our own abilities. He knows I took off the big coat and I put a coat, a jacket that fits. Staying close to the familiar and the comfortable. Christ is calling us out of our comfort zones to something bigger and greater in him. I there is a hymn that I'm quite sure you probably sing still, uh, but I remember singing it a lot when I was in the church growing up. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. All to Jesus I surrender. Humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. It's not just saying or singing, I surrender all. But we say things like, I want to know you more. Have your way in my life, Lord. Not my will, but thy will be done, Lord. You must increase and I must decrease. We say the words, we sing the songs, and that's just to name a few. And I know we are sincere when we say that and when we speak those words, but most of the time there ends up being a condition with that heartfelt request because when God begins to answer us, we say, oh, that's too hard. Oh, don't send me there. I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too nervous. I can't speak in front of people, no, God, don't do that. We want to serve God on our terms according to our comforts. How many believe that we can put God in a box? Anybody here believe we can put God in a box? I'm so glad that you are saying no. Who's in the box? Who do we put in a box when it comes to serving God? We put ourselves in the box. And when we put ourselves in the box, when he wants to pour his blessings out on us or begin to minister to us, I couldn't find a box big enough to crawl in. <laughs> they go all around us. We might get a few trickle down, but they usually go all around us. And we see other people, God blessing and using other people, and we say, well, how come he's not using me? Why won't he send me? I said, here, my Lord, send me. But we have put ourselves many times in a box where we're not able to receive what the instruction that he wants us to do in order to accomplish that. And so we want to come out of that box because we're missing out on God's greatness for our lives, his body, the church, because we want things comfortable. The gospel, sing the gospel singer Andre Crouch wrote a song, If I Never Had a Problem, I wouldn't know God could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God could do. I praise God for the uh, testimony on this morning, and oh, well, both of them, actually, because that increases our faith, or it should increase our faith. And you know, God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for one, he'll do for the other. But it's going to be different because our lives are different. He's called us to things that are different but he's still faithful, he's still God, and he's concerned about what concerns you. When um, we, when Stephen and I knew that this is what we were gonna do, and, and we had to do, as you go through this, we have to go through fundraising, or we call it friend raising, or to get partners to help us. And it's true, you do give up everything. You give up everything. But we are willing. We just like, Lord, we surrender it. It's not ours anyway. It all belongs to you. You know, and when 
when we give back, he, he blesses us with so much more. Um, it seems like it just increases because we, we trust him for what uh, he's called us to do. But Stephen, um, he quit his job so we could uh, continue the fundraising. We had to travel. And so when he wrote his resignation letter to take to his job, uh, on the way to his boss to give him his uh, resignation letter, he stopped at his mailbox at work. And when he looked at his mailbox, there was an envelope. He took out the envelope, and there and there was his annual review. And you might know where I'm going with this. And so he l opened up the envelope, read his review, which gave his new salary for the year. And he came home, he says, Peggy, he said, this is the most money I have ever made in my life. And I just like, um, and now you're going to the least you've ever made <laughs> in your life. He said, yeah, and he had to weigh it. He was weighing it. He said, should I wait a little while longer? I said, no. I said, God always provides. He knows exactly what he's doing. And if we can't trust him here, how are we going to trust him over there? So he quit his job. Um, and then that next month, we were packing up uh, to have a sale and we sold everything that we had all the way down to our cars and then we moved into um, an apartment temporarily before we had to uh, leave and it was just so strange uh, to do that but yet and still we said Lord every day we had to surrender to him not just things uh, but just you, you know Lord you know what we're feeling and you know the struggle, leaving family, leaving friends, going to a place we've never been. We don't even know what we're going to do. You know, I might have shared this earlier, but when uh, we went, uh, when we knew this is where we were going, and we said we're going to Sri Lanka, we had to look up where Sri Lanka was. We didn't even know where that was. But uh, God spoke to my heart, and he said, you know, uh, I have, and I am. He said, I've already been there, and I'm there today. He said, and I'm going to be there when you get there to meet you. And he has been from day one. He's shown us the way. He's ordered our steps. And we are just rejoicing in what God is doing there with uh, the church there in Sri Lanka. And you know what? Uh, we'd love to see any of you. If you believe God has called you to missions, or you just want to experience missions, let us know. We'd be happy to host you. And the pastors and their congregations would love to serve you. Um, you know, God doesn't ask us to give the perfect surrender in our own strength or will. But he is ready and willing to work it in us. In Philippians 2.13, it says, It is God who works in you to will and act in order to fulfill his good purpose. I call Romans 12, 1 and 2 my life scripture uh, because it's the first scripture that really impacted my heart. And it was something that the Holy Spirit brought to my mind even before I knew it was a scripture. And so I call that my life scripture, which reads, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And I want to share three things from that scripture. Number one, present ourselves to God as a living sacrifice. Put it in, putting aside our own will and replacing it with God's will. We need to understand everything belongs to God. If we were born again, if we are born again believers, we belong to God. He paid the ultimate price when he died on the cross. He said our, we are no longer our own, but we're bought with a price. We must not be conformed to the world. When the Bible speaks of the world, it is not referring to the earth. It is speaking of the mentality and thinking of the times. 
the spiritually bankrupt mindset that is hostile toward the things of God and primarily focuses on man's own selfish desires. That's what we think about a lot of times. Well, how will it, be, will it benefit me? Well, what about me? In 1 John 2, 15 through 17, it says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes from the Father, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. And the third one is we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How do we do this with so much bombarding us everywhere we go, everywhere we turn? We have to literally saturate our mind and heart with those things that are spirit that will spiritually build us up. It has to be intentional. You know, I, I that is a word that I, I use a lot now, intentional. It has to be intentional because we can so easily, we so easily distracted and uh, get busy that we have to, and it's sad that we have to, okay, I got to get my mind back on this because the enemy will come in there before you know it. Oh, ha, where did that come from? So we have to intentionally um, saturate our mind and build us up, studying God's word daily, prayer, fellowship with other believers. Paul tells us in Philippians 4 and 8, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So we have to keep our minds focused on Christ. You know, God's plan for your life and my life is better than any plan we may have for our life. And I know that many of you can quote this scripture. Jeremiah 29, 11. Go ahead. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We say it a lot. We say it a lot. But do we step out in faith, trusting him? Do we seek him? God, what is that plan? What is that purpose? Or is it something that we put in our mind uh, that, okay, if, if it's, if he's working in my life and something difficult comes or something that, oh, he said it's not going to harm you. He said it's not. Well, it's not. He's going to protect you through it, but we're going to go through some things. But he said, but be of good courage. Why? Because he has overcome. And so we're more than conquerors. We're going to suffer some things. We're going to go through th some things, yes, but he's going to see us through. According to Matthew sixteen twenty four. It says, we must deny ourselves. Amen? We put the will and purpose of God above our own. Take, take up our cross daily, and it is a daily thing. It's not just a one, okay, God, I give it to you, and it's going to be, oh. But every day, every day when we get up, Steve and I say, God, we surrender this day to you. What is it that you have for us to do? Sometimes he says, I just want you to stay home and spend time with me. Sometimes he has us to go out, but it's daily, daily surrendering, daily submitting to the Father. Uh, it is in dying to ourselves, total surrender to God, that we find God's plan and purpose for our lives. Paul also writes, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me because I've died to myself. Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith. You live by, we live by faith. We live by, it's, it's okay to talk. <laughs> we live by, okay, the life, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, Galatians 2.20. I believe that it encourages our pastors tremendously and our leaders when they hear and see their members 
stepping up to God's call upon their lives. When he hears that, you, when you go to him and say, you know, Pastor, God is calling me to do this, or he's placed this on my life. What do I do? What a joy, I'm quite sure, that brings to the leaders and the pastors of the name. Oh, to see that the preaching that they've done, the teaching that they've done, has hit into that heart. And they have actually been ambassadors. We're called all to be ambassadors for Christ. You know, he said it's going to another country. Well, you know, this is not our home. You know, we are ambassadors for the kingdom. And so wherever we go, we are to represent. Whether it's called overseas, whether it's called to, your, uh, to the grocery store that you go to on a regular basis, to your job, you are an ambassador for Christ. But when they know that when, they, when you begin to say, you know, God is telling me this, or God is calling me to this ministry, I'm quite sure that just brings joy to their lives to know, okay, they're getting it, okay? And they're going to have to let, let you go. They'll do some training and teaching and leading, but to see that. And you know who, who gets even more excited and who's more joyful is our Heavenly Father. Finally, I can begin to work and do what I've created them to do, surrendering all to Jesus. So as I close, I want to challenge you to go to God, our creator, our redeemer, the author and the finisher of your faith. The I am that I am. The one who knows the plan for your life, no matter what age, and surrender all to him. Let the one who wrote your life story. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Jeremiah 1.5. He not only wrote your story, but he's in your story. He's walk, ready to walk you through to what the next step is in your life. God believes in you. He is with you every step of the way. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Things will get hard and challenging. We face challenges every day. But God always shows up. And he has done miraculous things that we could not have done on our own. We, and we didn't do. He did it. And we just watched. He just wants us to show up. And when, he, when we show up for him, he, he does all the work. But he is ready always there ready to lead you through it all and you can go to psalms 139 i'm not going to read it because it's a long one and it's a good one it shows you you know no matter where you go no matter where you are no matter what you do he's there he's right there so once again thank you kansas city community church for your partnering with us for we we feel the prayers we feel the love and it is such encouraging it's such an encouragement to know that you are holding the rope and we just thank you for it. Thank you, Pastor.